sigma notation is something that does cause some students a lot of problems just because it, it looks really weird, I think, at least the first time you look at it. So what do we mean by this? Well, if you're Greek, you know what sigma is. That's just one of your letters. I'm going to try to draw it, but I don't really draw it very well. But this is the letter right here. It's sigma. It usually has a little sort of ticks here, but it's basically a list looking thing. So this sigma notation, what that really means, this is, that's sigma, by the way. And what that just means, it just means add up all the terms. That's all this means. So you may need to know something though. You have to know, so maybe I'll say this, so need to know. Well, you need to know the equation. You need to know sort of the rules. You know, how do you actually do it? So you need to know the equation for it. And you need to know where to start, where to start adding, and where to stop. That's sort of how it works. So let's do something then with the actual notation here. So the notation itself, here's how it looks. So in general, now in math we like to write uh, notations and keep everything really generic, which mathematicians like it because it keeps things simpler, but a lot of students think it makes it much more complicated. So well, let's just look at how we can write the generic notation here. So we can say like this. This right here, for example, is the notation here. This is it in general. This is how we write it. Now what in the world does this all mean? Well what this means um, is add up all the terms and in this case right here are all the instead of all the terms. Maybe we'll say add up all the numbers. Maybe that's easier to say. Add up all the numbers in in this case right here, this, let's maybe define a few things here. This right here, you are, that's just the equation. That's sort of, that's your rule. That's the equation. And r equals 1, what this means is start here. So make r, see this is u with a subscript r. So that tells you uh, your equation depends on r. So it says make r1, start there. And then it says keep going until r, whoops, I need an r here start here and this says stop here. So what this really means is add up all the numbers in u of r and here we're going to say where in this case here r equals 1, 2, 3. So these are integer values. They go up. They start off at 1, then it goes 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, dot dot dot. Where do you keep going till? Until you reach this value n. Now this notation then may actually make things look even more complicated than they are, haha. Uh -huh. but when you see examples, I hope it'll make more sense. So let's actually just take a look. Just keep in mind, sigma notation just means add up all the, and it, you know, add up all the whatevers, start here, finish here. So let's do an example here. Find this sum. So here we want to find the sum, and this is sigma, like this right here, r equals 11, uh, whoops, I didn't mean 11, I meant to say r equals 1. That's important here. So r equals 1 to r equals 3, and this goes 3r minus 5. Let's actually calculate this. So what this really means is this. Add up all the 3r minus 5 values, start with r equals 1, and make r equals 1 and 2 and 3, and stop there. This is really what this means. That means I'm going to take this equation here and say fine then. 3 times, and in this case, I'm going to make r equal 1. So 3 times 1 minus 5. That's sort of my first term here. And I'm going to take that, I'm going to add to it, figure out this thing again, so 3 times r, but instead of r, I make r equal not 1, but 2 minus 5. Plus 3 times 3 minus 5. And do I keep going? Nope, because I know to start here, stop here. Okay, so I start at r equals 1. This value right here, this r equals 1 right here, this tells me to start here. And this value right here, this r equals 3, that tells me basically keep going. So in other words, see, go a 1, then 2, then 3, and then stop when you get to 3. Include that one. See, if I went from r equals 1 to r equals 5, let's say, then I would have two more terms. I'd have 3 times 1 minus 5, 3 times 2 minus 5, 3 times 3 minus 5, I'd have 3 times 4, and 3 times 5. 
So you see, that's how I can do this. It says start here, finish here. Then just calculate this, that's all. So in this case, we're here. 3 times 1 is 3. So I need 3 minus 5. I'll just put brackets just to keep things separate here. Plus 3 times 2, but that's 6 minus 5. Plus 3 times 3, that's 9 minus 5. Well, I don't need brackets anymore now. 3 minus 5, that's just negative 2. And 6 minus 5 is just 1. And 9 minus 5 is just 4. So I need negative 2 plus 1 plus 4. That's the same thing as saying 4 plus 1 minus 2. So 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 minus 2 is 3. Therefore, that's my sum. My sum is equal to 3. That's what this result right here, this really complicated looking thing, adds up to just 3. So see, that's how we figure this out. We can do another example here. We can do one that has ugly looking exponents, and that's okay, we can still deal with it. So again, this says start at 1, finish at 4, and use this as your rule. Because remember, this is how it works in general. This just tells you your equation, start here, finish here. So in this case then, let's do it. So we've got 1 over 2 to the power of 1 plus 1 over 2 to the power of, well, I start at 1, I have to keep going until I reach 4. So 1 over 2 to the power of 3, 1 over 2 to the power of 4. See, wherever I see an r, I replace it with whatever. So in this case, 1 over 2 to the 1, 1 over 2 to the 2, 1 over 2 to the 3, and I add each time because this is sigma. Sigma here tells me to add. I suppose I should sort of... So this is how I do it. Now I just got to calculate this. Well, 2 to the power of 1 is just 2. Plus 1 over 2 to the power of 2. 2 to the power of 2 is just 4. And 2 to the power of 3, that's 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. 2 to the power of 4, that's 16. All right. I want to calculate this. So maybe I should get these as a common denominator. I'm going to make them all over 16. Because that's the largest thing I think that they can all be written as. Sorry, smallest thing in common, I mean. Well, this 1 over 16 is easy. It's already over 16. So 2 times what gives you 16? 2 times 8. So 1 times 8 is 8. 4 times what gives you 16? 4. So 1 times 4 is 4. 8 times what gives you 16? 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. Well, then I can just rewrite it then as 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, all that over 16. That's the whole reason why we get a common denominator, so we can do this trick. And 8 plus 4, that's 12. 12 plus 2 is 14. 14 plus 1 is 15. So I can say then that my sum ends up being 15 over 16. So again, although this notation may look really weird, I hope you see it's pretty straightforward. You just have a rule. And it's going to have some r's in it, because that tells you then basically, all right, start off making r equal 1, and then increase it, keep going until you reach this top value. So really, that's why this just means add up all the, here's your rule, start here, finish here.